got to take her everywhere you go. So, you know, right? yeah. so. Good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be here. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I serve on the board of the RGB Partnership, so leadership development and just the perspectives that you get as part of this program is just amazing. So glad to be here. Uh, and I, I, I'm the warm up back for a great panel that you'll have uh, this afternoon. So um, I, you know, like Sabrina said, I've, uh, I've had perspective on economic development from very different lenses, right? And all I share today is those perspectives, right? Because life is all about perspectives. So the more you learn, the more you see, the more you actually have to suffer through some of those things, you know, you'll get to know uh, what it is. And, and I'm from the Valley. What's really interesting, I'm from the Valley. Uh, I was one of those young people. I, I wasn't one that said, I gotta get out of here. I just followed friends, right? So I left right after high school. Um, and just like that, gone 25 years, you know, it, but my plan was never to come back, you know, just like my plan was never to leave, my plan was never to come back. But it's really cool about me and there's others and, and you know, Daniel and others. There's so many stories now that people are advancing their careers back to the Rio Grande Valley. So uh, that's very cool because you get all the perspectives from other places. I know we're so, you know, don't let the young people leave, don't let the young people leave, but I would not have had the perspectives if I didn't leave, right? And just the where the places I went, you know, San Antonio, Austin, and you know, up mostly Central Texas, we're seeing the same things that I saw 15, 20 years ago. We're just on a lag, right? Um, so it's, it's really cool. So let them leave, let them come back home when they're making more money and more of a, a, a contributor taxpayer. So it's, it's really important. So um, I, um, I'll get into this a little bit, but I really want to jump to economic development, but this is really cool. Um, so my previous role as city manager of Edinburgh, absolutely loved it. And you know, this role and Veronica Gonzalez, which is my boss, is probably the only one that could have taken me from that. So um, there, there's been different versions of the role that I'm in, but the university with a lot of things going on in the community really wanted to enhance economic development. So I was very fortunate enough to, to get this role. And we rebranded things, so I oversee what's called the Office of Workforce and Economic Development. And just for those that, you know, I, I like some of the history lessons here. This comes from Senate Bill 24 of the 83rd legislature. So 2013 is what was enacted to create UTRGV. So, and again, Daniel will get into regional economic development. But when we talk about regionalism, I really think about not just cooperation, but how do you, how do you operationalize that? You know, you can't just say, oh, you're my friend, I love you. What does that actually mean operationally? This was the largest operational collaboration that really, it, it was the first part of the snowball that kicked it over the ledge, right? And I really do think that everything we've seen uh, since then, you know, you know, like the merging of the MPO, other consolidations of, of different organizations, it really stemmed from this. And people don't realize, sometimes you gotta think back, the political and policy will that it took to make this happen is amazing. It's, it's really amazing. Sometimes you just think like, wow, I can't believe it actually happened. To dissolve two universities that had long-standing history and pride, to dissolve them and create a new one. But people always ask, okay, and sometimes you gotta remember, why did, why did that happen? Um, so what the consolidation or dissolving and creating a new, obviously what that did, that bill created the School of Medicine which has been an economic powerhouse in, in the region in terms of what it's done for the economy, but also access to the PUF, the Permanent University Fund. So essentially, quite simply, the resources that the Valley now has because of that is just enormous, right? And then you get the cool stuff like football and all that. That's I mean, like, it's just, it's a snowball effect. But one thing that was in there, and um, Senator Hinojosa wrote this, was that there was a mandate for what they call at that point, the Center for Border and Economic Enterprise Development. So just, that's, that's the little paragraph of the bill. And when these bills are written, it, it really doesn't mandate how you do it, right? So we've had different versions of that. But essentially what we do now is to fulfill what we were mandated to do, right? This Office of Workforce and Economic Development kind of goes back to that. 
Um, we have a really interesting model. Uh, really proud to say that Linda, uh, so anything that I don't cover, uh, Linda is one of our directors, uh, and she was one of the directors and leaders that went through the UTB transition to UTRGB, and culturally, that, that does a lot to you, right? So take the war stories from Linda, but, but <laughs> this is, this is, these are the departments. Um, and I don't know if you saw the UTRGB uh, logo that's outside of this building which you're very proud of because the only other logo is the seed, right? <laughs> so uh, that is our footprint, you know, and serving the region equitably is very important to us, right? Very important to us. So uh, we have these footprints and partnerships and uh, Omar Rodriguez right here, this young man right here, is, is the human version of the sign that you see outside. So he is our workforce and economic development uh, specialist that's actually housed here. So if you look right around the corner by, by the restrooms over there, we have a premier suite. So that's kind of our landing point for all these programs. Mm -hmm. I won't get into these. Uh, you have Linda for that, but it's just an, a massive amount of resources. So I do want you to learn more about these because as regional leaders, advocating for resources is something that you, know, you should be empowered with. So you can scan their QR code or you can simply just Google either RGB economic development or UTRGB economic development and we're the first thing that pops up. Because it's a lot, this is a whole you know, hour presentation. But uh, a lot of programs and the real cool thing about that is that a lot of them are grant funded and at no cost to the community, which is awesome. So, and again, this is our regional network. You know, I, I, you know we have footprints everywhere because it's important. The Rural Grand Valley is a very interesting place to have a, a university because, you know, if you think of all great universities like UT Austin or Southwest Tech, uh, Texas State, um, density is key, right? They're all dense. Well, we don't have the luxury of, of being dense. We have to equitably and accessibly serve the entire Fort County area. So it's challenging. This is the greatest challenge of UTRGB ensuring that students in the community, of all those <coughs> communities, receive the benefit. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these. Oops. You know what? I have the wrong presentation. It took me, because I want you to send it out real quick. So I, I want to hear from you, just throw out, what's, what's economic development? Somebody, just. Bringing business to your area to create jobs. I thought it was right here, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing business to the area to create jobs. That's pretty spot on. A, anybody have any other perspectives of what economic development is? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it, you know, if you try to look up the definition of economic development, you're going to get a lot of different things, right? So, I, I put it in a very practical standpoint. And again, I serve uh, the Council of Governments at LRGBDC. Uh, federally, it's called the Economic Development District. So, I got to lead that for five years, which is real cool. Uh, and then as a city manager, and then, you know, we had the EDC as a city department. You just, you learn different perspectives. And quite simply, and again, I, I talk to elected officials a lot, and you have to give them the tip of the iceberg, right? So you can't get into the weeds <laughs> of all, the panel will get into some of the weeds. But quite simply, uh, it is uh, money in, money out, right? That, that's, that's it. You need more things to do this than do this. And you know, all the cool things, unfortunately, uh, the, the restaurants, the entertainment, you know, the concerts do that, right? So if you have more of this than that, you have an issue in your community. So, and then where it really gets interesting is this dynamic. So does, does anybody see kind of what's wrong with this picture? They're going to take them off. Exactly, exactly. And if you just Google this, you will, for whatever reason, always see them going in different directions. Which, that homeostasis of, of a community means that those two somewhat, they're not doing this, they're, you know, are they gonna always be perfectly aligned? No, 
but they have to be in the same ballpark, right? So something that, that I coined a while back, and again, in, in explaining economic development locally to elected officials, is their challenge with a lot of decision making, is I always start with the ABCs, right? So you're gonna learn the ABCs. And A is always good jobs. You can't start a healthy economy without good jobs, period. So, and good jobs, the way I define them, the way it should be defined, they're, they're good jobs. And right now, a good job in this area is something that pays about 20 bucks an hour and up, that has advancement opportunities, it's not a fly-by-night opportunity, it's gonna stay in your community sustainably, right? That's a good job, right? You get that, and you do enough of that, or, or at a certain point of that, then you get the B, you get the rooftops, right? Uh, and you only get rooftops through good jobs. And rooftops are where people live, they're commercial buildings or things like that. But then you get all the cool stuff. So you can't do this without that and that. It's, it's really that simple. Um, you know, in EDC sometimes, again, this is the cool stuff. <laughs> so everybody wants cool stuff in their community, right? Um, I tell the story one time that in Edinburgh, we were very, very proud of something we had worked for a while. And <laughs> opened a small manufacturing uh, uh, facility in the industrial park, and nobody really showed up <laughs> to, the, to the announcement of the groundbreaking. When Chick-fil-A on Trenton opened up, we had to do a traffic management plan. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's okay. Not a lot of people understand this. That's why leadership and leaders like you kind of need to understand. And especially from the EDC world, which you'll get to later, is you, you, you shouldn't really incentivize this at all. Because if you focus on this, this will naturally always come, right? Part of the ABCs though, I do say sometimes X. And this is important. And this is where you have to use real strategic data-driven decision-making because, you know, like, and I use that word balance or homeostasis, you, you gotta have this balance, you know? Um, so, like, you, you look at the, the FAR interchange, when it was built, uh, oof, I don't even know what year it was originally built, but, you know, a lot of the comments is, well, why didn't, why didn't they just build them the way they're building, rebuilding it now, right? It's just, it, it's that equi equitability, again, of resources, right? If you have 15 lanes, you'll take all the resources, nobody will use it till maybe 100 years later, right? Um, it's funny, as a city manager last night, like last night I got, a, I got a good night's sleep, we were talking about that, I got a good night's sleep, but when I was in that previous role, for all the city managers in the valley, they did not sleep last night. What, do you know why? It was raining. Like 10 drops of water freak you out. So you gotta have water, but not too much water, right? <laughs> And you know, all this thing, all these communities are always, always looking for this perfect balance of all the infrastructure and resources. I, I mean, it, it's, it's a constant juggle. So, you know, all my friends that are city managers here, it's just, it, you know, I have a lot of empathy. So I'll get into this, which will kind of kick into to what Daniel's gonna get into, but you know, these are what measure all that balance. Right, and these first ones are green. And if you look at the Rio Grande Valley, those are really good. You know, we we're, we're at, at historic levels of sales tax, valuation of property, uh, GDP, unemployment rate. So our grade is, you know, a strong A in those areas. But again, balance, balance is the key. Um, there's some things that we have to always keep our eye on, right? <laughs> And as good as this are, as good as these things, these indicators are, we still have some issues here, right? Our poverty rate is still below state average. All those red, all those three are below state average and national averages, which is not acceptable, period, right? So um, I always think of the dichotomy of somebody in extreme poverty watching a rocket go up in Brownsville or outside of Brownsville. Just, just think of that. There's people with just unlivable conditions watching a rocket go up from, from you know. So till we, we 
strive for that ultimate balance, our, our job is not done here, right? But the coolest thing, and that's why of all the perspectives I've had, that's why UTRGV, the harness of UTRGV is just amazing. And it rolls down to this word, and I don't know if you've ever heard that word or really kind of digested it, but economic mobility. And that's where education, the impact of education in a family that lives in poverty or has a history of poverty is just amazing. You know, we have so many first generation students that one student graduating and making a high sustainable living wage can reframe that whole family's future, right? It's just, it's amazing. So um, that is what UTRGV, that's, that's its most powerful asset, what it's doing from an economic mobility standpoint. And then, you know, the, the, those are asterisks because I, inflation, that's always a key thing you gotta look at, right? It influences, um, I don't do the majority of the grocery shopping in my household, and the other day I picked up some, like a 12 pack of Coke. I didn't realize they're like eight bucks now. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's just some things, if you don't do the shopping, go look at, just, it's just some things are, it's, it's scary, right? So, um, and kind of the last thing, and we get asked this a lot as economic developers, uh, what, what drives good jobs into a region, right? And a lot of people think it's incentive based. And that's part of the equation, but you know, for those poker players, incentives are always the kicker card. That's what's gonna set difference. But it really boils down to workforce, and that's almost always at the top of the list. The workforce are what will bring you jobs and grow jobs in the area, right? Demographics, population spending tower rooftops. This is especially evident for, for retail. If you look at those really complex retail organizations, they have so much analytics on the spending power of a region. So they usually know where they're going before we, know, we do, right? It's, it's, it's a science. Um, and then infrastructure. And then the last, again, X factor is the business climate, right? So all those things combined, and then, I don't have that asterisk, but if I did, I'd put it over here and say, okay, the incentives are kind of that kicker card. But every good job in the region needs a foundation of these things. So, um, you know, I just wanted to whet your appetite. You're gonna hear economic development all day today. So, um, I, I do want, I believe my, that. So take that number down. It's my cell phone. You can always, you know, Linda's an amazing resource as well. But I am here as a resource for this community. And that is the coolest part of my job. Not only do I get to oversee six departments, but I work with our city managers and our EDC directors daily because we're all collectively working so hard to advance this, this region. You know? um, there's got to be, again, that balance. Think about balance. And, you know, as many cool things as there are, when you drive around, you know, have you ever said, okay, um, I want to buy an RV, and then all of a sudden you start seeing RVs on the road? Okay, start looking at small manufacturers. Start looking at buildings that normally don't stand out in the community. And you'll start seeing like, wow, I had no idea that was there. I wonder what they do. You know, they're tiny. Um, those are the things that drive why we can have top golf and Dave and you know Busters and all that kind of stuff. So they're so and so they're they're small. And one thing we have to do, you know, we're we we are on this ongoing mission to bring new jobs to this area. Every EDC works that right. But so much of the job growth happens from what's already here. You know, upward more than half of all job growth comes from industries that are already here in the region. So we do have to do a better job making everybody, especially small businesses, which you know Linda has a big part of that and our SBDC more resilient. We have such a strong entrepreneurial spirit in the Valley, which is amazing, but we have somewhat lacking longevity of small businesses, right? I'm sure all of you have a, you know your favorite small business and somewhere you've gone and the doors are closed, right? And that's, and usually those are local businesses. So um, we, we need to make them stronger. We need to kind of build that capacity. 
And uh, all of you, you're now ambassadors of this message, right? So the purpose of today is to give you that comprehensive understanding of economic development and then go out and live it, right? Live it, push it. And one thing that you'll learn so much about today is all how the intricate parts of the valley work together, right? And we get a bad rap sometimes, and that's really unfair because this community is it's amazing. Fifth largest uh, pop, you know, community in the whole state. We're the fifth largest metro area, right? The biggest difference, I'll leave you with this. Just So the other, we're the fifth largest metro. The other four metros that are larger than us have something that we don't have. Can anybody guess what that is? Think, think about the, the ones that are larger. No? Yeah, plenty of that. That's it. One anchor centralized city. So we, you know, and if you look, if we're number five, you look at number six, seven, and it, in terms of metro, you go back to Corpus Christi, El Paso, that are anchor cities. We don't have that one anchor city. So we have to have an alignment with all of our cities. So when something, you know, we get the rap that sometimes we don't collaborate here. I'll actually challenge that to say when something actually happens here, it takes more collaboration than any other place. You know, and I can say that. I work for the city of San Antonio, which there's a lot of little cities around San Antonio. Mm -hmm. They don't need them. They just ran through and do what they want to do. And the other cities you follow along. That doesn't work right. here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, luckily we have this network of so many professionals and friends that we all care equally. So. Uh, thank you guys. Enjoy your day. It's going to be a long day, so it's a chat. But it's important information, so thank you guys very much.